Bring in now Osama Hamdan. He's the Hamas senior spokesman. Joins me on the phone. Good to have you with us. So first of all, we understand Hamas fighters are currently engaging uh, with Israeli forces inside Israel. What is the point of their operation right now? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, it was clear that uh, the whole operation is a response for the Israeli attacks against Al-Aqsa Mosque, Jerusalem, and the West Bank. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, the, there was a, great, a big message for the Israelis. The Palestinian occupied lands is still a Palestinian lands, regardless to the presence of the settlements and the settlers. And uh, there will be a time that those lands will be evacuated from the Israelis and it will be back for the Palestinians. This is the, the important idea of still fighting on our occupied lands and, uh, 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 in the year 1948. All right. You're fighting, as you say, to end the occupation. But why is Hamas attacking civilians? Well, uh, th there was no attack against the civilians. All what was uh, declared but by Hamas... Let me jump in there, Mr. Hamdan, Hamdan, if I may, because a statement by the UN Secretary General clearly says that he's appalled by reports civilians have been attacked and abducted from their own homes. And we've seen videos, in fact, of what looks like Israelis being taken into Gaza. Are you saying the UN Secretary General is wrong? Well, the pictures well, we've well, seen this, are wrong? This, this well, this is a very important point to be uh, figured. Uh, through the last 20 years, Israel held attacks against Gaza and killed thousands of Palestinians, civilians, and no one has any comment. Uh, I, I, I watched uh, President uh, Biden talking about standing beside Israel and, and its attacks against the Palestinians. Well, it's uh, a kind of hypocrisy. He is not talking about the Palestinians who were being killed. Yesterday, a whole family, 18 members' family, Shabbat family, were killed this night by Israeli bombing in an airstrike in, on their own house where there is no militants there. They were only civilians. Uh, while when you are talking about the settlers, you are not talking about civilians like the Palestinians. You are talking about settlers who are armed, who came to Right, but, but if I may, the, 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 the Israelis, if the Israelis are targeting and killing innocent Palestinian civilians, that does not mean in international law it's acceptable for Palestinian groups no, to target and kill Israeli civilians, it's right? Not, it's not accepted to attack civilians according to international law. And so, so that, to, belief, to come back to my question, so why, to let, let me, belief, if I may, uh, read to you a statement by Amnesty International, which is condemning the targeting by Israel of Palestinian civilians, but it's also condemning in a statement by October the 7th, saying Palestinian armed groups must refrain from targeting civilians and using indiscriminate weapons, acts amounting to war crimes. Is Amnesty wrong? <laughs> Well, uh, I have to say that you have to differentiate between the settlers and the civilians. The settlers, according to the international law, they are not civilians. They are wounded. They, they attack the Palestinians. The, they, they, in fact, shoot it against the Palestinians. So you have to differentiate between both issues, the civilians and the settlers, who are not, according to the international law, civilians. Uh, and we, we so uh, under international law, there, fi firing rockets, which there. is what Amnesty is saying, firing rockets are indiscriminate weapons that can hurt and do hurt civilians. Well, we hope we hope that Amnesty can uh, urge the international community to either to make an end for the Israeli occupation or to urge them to send uh, more developed weapons to attack just only the, the soldiers. Uh, because we are not targeting on purpose the civilians. You know, there is a huge amount of civilian targets inside the occupied lands 1948, which Hamas is not aiming on ta or targeting them. We have declared that the settlers, they are part of the occupation, and the settlers, they are part of the armed Israeli power. They are not normal civilians as they are named all the time. So some of these towns, though, are, w are in the southern areas of Israel. We're not just talking about settlements in the West Bank. 
Well, uh, we everyone knows that those are settlements. And if you are talking about Sidrot, it's a settlement. If you are talking about Native, it's a settlement. Those are settlements on our occupied lands, 1948. Everyone has to understand that the Palestinian lands is a whole complete land from sea to river. And uh, the Israelis who are who, who, who signed the Oslo Agreement, even they, they did not implement the agreement, and they are still taking over the Palestinian lands. So what, what the Israelis are doing, they are telling the Palestinians there is no hope for the Palestinians to have their independent, uh, independent state. Blinken, when he paid a visit to Ramallah... Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I have to months, ask he, you, Salah Hamdan, to hold on for a second. There is a live press conference we're going to listen into right now, and we'll come back to you in a minute, so do stay with us. All right, we're waiting to uh, get in some live translation in so we can hear what the Israeli army is saying in this press conference. I believe we have it now, so let's listen in. The army is, has launched a large-scale offense against Gaza Strip. Any, we are targeting Hamas leaders. We have superiority in terms of uh, firepower, and we will disclose the results accordingly. The Air Force, as well as the Army personnel, have harnessed all their capabilities, and they will be put to maximum use in the coming hours. We will also use artillery, and we will continue with our large-scale offensive against Gaza. All right, so we uh, caught there the remarks of Daniel Hagari there saying, a large-scale offensive will continue. Let's bring in Sam Hamdan. He's a spokesperson for Hamas. And uh, you heard the vows not only there, but Israel's prime minister vowing to turn Hamas sites into rubble. What's your response to that? All right, we seem to have lost uh, the connection there with Osama Hamdan. We'll try and... Uh, maybe we can try again? All right, let me try again. So, Mr. Osama Hamdan, if you can hear me now, yes. we are hearing the vows there from the Israeli military, but also before that from Israel's prime minister. Benjamin Netanyahu is vowing to turn Hamas sites into rubble. What's your response to yes. that? Well, they have been doing that for the Palestinian people for the last 70 decades, and the Palestinians are still standing, fighting for their cause. Israel has to understand that they can't get rid of the Palestinians. They are, they are the landowners, and they have their own right to build their own state. Hamas will fight like the Palestinian people. There will be sacrifices. We understand that. We know the consequences. But we have also understand that at the end of the fight, the Palestinian people will keep standing against the occupation, and we will win our fight. They have left Gaza, and they will leave other parts of our lands. We will determine. We, we will decide our future by ourselves. Israel cannot keep controlling the life of the Palestinians, and the international community have to understand that the problem in the region, the instability in the region, is because of the presence of Israel, nothing else. If Israel launches a ground offensive, what will that mean for the people of Gaza? Well, it will be uh, a very big massacre by the Israelis, as they have done that from uh, uh, 1948 up till now. Uh, but also, they will not uh, play a game. It will be a very tough, 
time for the Israelis, not in Gaza only, everywhere in Palestine and maybe from other places, not only in Palestine. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Osama Hamdan.